Okay, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for joining us today. So, uh, inshallah, today's class will look into the uh, second series, session eight. We will discuss uh, on issue related to Mal and Bitcoin. Like I've told you, we have taken issue related to uh cryptocurrency bitcoin which is the most famous cryptocurrency we ever experienced so actually now we wanted to see the exegesis or the scholars view on mal when we say mal we are referring also to currency in arabic marxist but um uh and bitcoin uh, the reason why i do not use money is well known to all of us but uh at least we should look into what a uh, scholar says about the issue related to Mal, which are the Islamic scholars. Uh, so the expected area to be covered, uh, first of all, we are going to look into the view of scholars in definition of Mal. Uh, and the subsequent, we look at the definition of Mal according to Hanafi scholars. We also look into the definition of mal according to majority of scholars. We are also to talk about the accepted definition of mal and what is being used under customary practice. When we say customary practice, we are referring to uruf. Uh, yeah, when we say uruf, we are referring to something that locally been accepted by the con uh, by the society, and we are to also. Uh, and discuss on Sharia analysis in light of Fatawa's and scholars' opinions, uh, and also Fatawa centers of Palestine and uh, Sheikh uh, Haytham from UK. So, and a lot, uh, and more, more in, or and a lot of discussions will also uh, follow. But these are the fundamental things we need to uh, look at. It okay? View of scholars in definition of mal. The Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad uh, does not explain the definition of mal in clear terms. When I'm referring to this sentence, I'm referring to the explanation being given to money, is, it seems to be in a general form of it. It seems to be in a general form of it. So there is nothing like specifically being identified as a mal, as a money, as a something that you make an exchange with. But at least by understanding such, it will also give us an understand, it will also give us a light background of how people are, how people are, it will give us a light to understand how people understand the mal in terms of clarity. Therefore, the juries and scholars differ somewhat in their definition of mal. So actually, you can see if, for instance, the congregation of individuals agreed to form something as a mal, according to what we are having in our physical domain, that that is, has to be considered as a man, because the Quran and Sunnah do not stipulate a single entity that this is the only entity you are to hold or you are to accept it as a man, as a uh, medium of exchange, as a currency. So um, we are also, to uh, look into the issue. Some scholars are of the view that mal is only used corporal and uh, tangible things. Other juries are of the view that mal includes both tangible and intangible things, provided that this thing has a both value and uh, desirability. So what are they saying? Some are considering it as the ayn. Once When we said ayn, something that is corporal, uh, something that you know is a tangible, something that you can have access to, something that you can touch it. Uh, but uh, other juries do consider that mal can be intangible. So if some says that can be intangible, it means even cryptocurrency can be mal. 
cryptocurrency because cryptocurrency most more especially like bitcoin is not physical thing it's a file being designed in a computer but it has only a value of single spending single spending mark this word it's not double spending because when it happens to be double spending i can send that bitcoin to you but the file also the original file remains with me so that i will send you a copy while the other copy is with me so that one we call double spending so satoshi nakamoto also tried to elevate such kind of thing try to minimize and also uh, 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 removed such instances that you cannot double spend the Bitcoin. When you transfer the file, automatically the file is being transferred from you to other person. So based on tangible and intangible, like I've said uh, previously, we are looking at the definition now in a general form of it, what scholars have been discussed on. So the definition of man, according to Hanafi scholars, Ibn Jam, in a paper, in a, uh, paper published in 1997, is of the view that man is something which is desirable and can be stored for the time of need. Anything can be recognized as a man. That is the definition. He said, is there something that which has a desirable store value, which it's been need time of needs. It's been needed time of needs. So, and you can spend such kind of uh, uh, thing at any time you want. So that recognized as a mal. When all or group of people accept and act as if something is mal. So at the moment that a group of society, a group of people comes together and agree to operate such instance or such item as a mal, now is being considered as a mal. Like we said it previously, there are some uh, some uh, society that even uh, in the contemporary, uh, when I say contemporary, it's not previous then before the Jordan Sahaba or this thing. Recently, there are some group of people that even consider a cigarette as a what? As a mal, as a medium of exchange. So, you know, it has to be agreed between the group of individuals or society. The same definition of mal is being given uh, by some juries uh, of Hanafis, which some says, according to Ibn uh, Ashihami, he says, he further cuts another juries that mal is something other than human being, which is created for the benefit of human and can be stored and used at a time of need. So, uh, they also define such that is there something that human being is in need of and can make use of it at the any moment he thinks is appropriate to make use of it. Um, but according to the above definition, we can realize two things in the definition. Number one, it will be desirable for a human being so that human being can have it as a desirable thing, as a something that you feel confident and also comfortable with it will be capable of store for the time of necessary. So it be possible that that thing can be kept and also use it in a future instances which it maintain its value. According to the definition, use fraud also and write such as riding a car or living in a house, copyright, etc., are not mal because these things cannot be stored. So if we look at the previous definition that says you can only store a value, it means, it means that intangible items or intangible services, when we say intangible, we are referring, for instance, to services, they are not defined as mal because they can only use the, uh, they can be only used in terms of use fraud. Use fraud, that is something that you hired and you are making use of it. So, and they even cited an example like you had a car, so you drive a car for a period of time in a developed world, they can rent a car for a period of one week, two weeks, three weeks, or even a month, for instance. You can be driving car, you can be going all over the places with the car, but that car is you hired from an organization or from a specific organization. 
So, but that does not mean that the ownership is being transferred to you. Yes, the ownership is being transferred to you, but temporarily. But at the end of the day, you will be uh, returning back the uh, what the car to the original owner after your time spare, uh, expires. So in that they are saying use fraud like this or copyright, uh, copyright the opportunity, uh, the right of copyright also is not considered as a man. So this is the view of some scholars because that you cannot store the value of the use fraud of those items. Although the above mentioned definition do not limit the definition of man to tangible or uh, ein, something that's corporate, ein, thing. It's clearly time, but can be understood for the for their contents of what we are going to see uh, below. This indication is the further supported from the writings of Hanafi scholars who clearly mentioned that the man should be tangible thing or ein. So in my uh, definition of Hanafi scholars, do agree that mal can be tangible thing, which is something that you can see in a physical instance. We are trying to develop how to relate this with what we are discussing, which is what Bitcoin. So is it Bitcoin in other view, is it possible to even consider Bitcoin as a mal? Because there are some differences between the scholars. Some do consider that intangible thing they are not considered as a man, but some are saying, yes, it's possible. So now there are even uh, discussions, there are even uh, uh, issues related to misunderstanding the terms that is it tangible item or intangible item can be mal or not. That is can be uh, um, a cur uh, currency, can be mal, can be money or not. So it is clear from the def this definition that according to Hanafi scholars, mal is limited to corporal and tangible thing. And that intangible thing like rights and benefit are not considered as mal according to Hanafi scholars. Please do understand that under Hanafi scholars, they cannot, it means they cannot use what? Cryptocurrency as a currency because cryptocurrency is not a iron, it's not a physical, it's not a corporate thing. Yes, it's not a corporate thing. It's a something that is what intangible, something that you cannot have access to. You, it's only a file, digital file being transferred from one place to another. Please, this is the Hanafi's view. So once if you agree that you are under Hanafi's uh, must have, that is uh, must have, you are not required even to ask that cryptocurrency is allowed or not. Let's look at the definition of mal according to majority of scholars. Uh, the majority of jurists uh, include Maliki, Shafi, and Hanbali scholars are of the view that mal is not limited to tangible things. So according to Maliki and Oda Hanif, uh, and uh, Shafi and Hanbali, they do consider even intangible as a mal. The majority view is that mal also include intangible things as well as benefit and right with the certain conditions. So these are the conditions that we wanted to look at it. In summary, the majority view of scholars is that mal is not limited to tangible things and it can be intangible things if it is fulfilled the above and mentioned conditions. Which, what are the conditions? That is the uh, uh, benefit are right with the set, uh, the benefits and rights, as we mentioned uh, earlier. Accepted definition from the scholars is that is the contemporary Hanafi scholars Shafi'i and Taki Usmani, more especially Taki Usmani, is a contemporary scholar who has a very vast knowledge in Islamic finance. Is of the view that is not tangible things such as right and benefit become valuable. So under Hanafi, he's the one that been drawn or he's the one that been agreed even intangible thing, non-tangible things such as right and benefit become valuable thing according to costume. So if the costume do allow you to, to do that, then it's treated as mal. So uh, Taki Usmani, Sheikh Taki Usmani do agree under Hanafi, he's under Hanafi, but he agrees that such instances is allowed to be treated, intangible things is allowed to be treated as a what? As a mal. He says that prevalent, customs, that is uh, what we are referring to Uruf, something that locally you agreed upon, you do agreed upon. For instance, now, if I come to Nigeria, what is being primarily agreed upon as a mal is Naira. 
So I will be using this NARA to perform all activities being needed by this NARA currency. If I go to uh, Pakistan, they have their money being attributed to. If I go to US, they have what? They have US uh, dollar. If I go to uh, UK, they have something called pound. So I will be using the local euro currency to make use of it. Or the local euro, if I say euro, something that locally been approved to be used as a money or something related to society. So the custom of business play uh, uh, vital role, which is pivotal uh, role in determining the benefit and rights for Oak and Man fear as a man. So it has to have these two attributes that is an manfa and al hukuk is being determined by the benefits and rights as we do mention in our previous discussion. So this is why, for example, copyright patents, trademarks, when we say copyright patents, trademarks, they are all important because when you have a trademark, uh, trademarks and somebody copy your trademarks and put on his product, you can sue the person into court and ask for the compensation of uh, being using your item without your own word, without your own authority. The same thing with the copyright. But trademark is being more uh, useful for the company that is having a logo, and that logo has to be registered as a trademark trademarks of that particular company or organization. So goodwill are considered as also a mark, even though things. Uh, things are intangible because they are very valuable things in costume and oof of business trade in today's world. So those things that we said is not tangible thing. Copyright, patent, trademarks, they are not on good wheels. They are not tangible things, but they have value. That value is being transformed them as a mal and they can also be considered. So it can be considered as a mal if they meet such condition that we are going to say it now. It is permissible and lawful in Sharia. That is why dead and alcohol are not considered as a mal. Because we say intangible, now dead person and alcohol, for instance, can you consider them as a what? As a, as a, a, as a mal? No, because they are not Sharia compliant. And dead is a something that if you pass that will, if you pass that direction, you have no other use unless your deeds that you did that you uh, and that you performed previously can uh, assist you and help you thereafter. Uh, hereafter, two, it's it is capable of being owned and possessed. So money among the attributes of money to be permissible and lawful in Sharia. Number two, it is capable of being owned and possessed. So you can own it and you can possess it. Number three, mal, it has some uses and benefits. It has to have some uses and benefits. Mal number four, if costume determine and treat something as a mal, it will automatically be considered as a mal. So if costume, your uruf, your local environment determines such kind of thing as a mal, as a money, as a something that has value to be considered as a mal, automatically be considered as a mal. So let's understand this definition. These are the accepted definition of mal from the uh, uh, various scholars. So customary practice. When I say customary practice, maybe some people may uh, get it very difficult to understand when I say Uruf, customary uh, distinct Uruf is considered as an important source of ruling when the text of Sharia do not give any judgment in explicit term, the jurists have said that what is derived from your uruf, that is from your society, is equivalent to what derived from the text, that is from the Sharia part of it. But mark you, all what you have to decide on to be your uruf should be Sharia compliance, not something that is not Sharia compliance, not gambling, not speculation, not interest rate, because that things are not Sharia compliance. The criteria for determining some of the mal is clearly defined in the text of Sharia. Therefore, the scholars have emphasized the role of costume or uh, custom in determining some as mal. So in this juncture, Sharia has been given that opportunity and privilege for those kind of environment to determine what exactly to be used as a mal for their own aspect. 
The juries of all four schools of Islamic law are unanimously that if something become valuable due to the custom and acceptability of the people, then it's considered as a mal, as we heard previously. Two, this is the reason that many Hanafi scholars have considered various rights and benefits, copyright, patent, trademarks, etc., as mal, since people in the society treat them as a valuable and material thing. So this is what exactly the costume is all about. And some of the Hanafi scholars, despite the fact they disagree with the intangible thing, but later on there are some selected people that do agree the intangible thing can also be mal when it has met the uh, necessary requirement. So attribute of mal, that is, that is the attribute the card, the features of mal, it has to, number one, be medium of exchange, units of account, and store of value. These are the three things that you have to attribute the mal with. Medium of exchange, you can give it and you can have something in exchange. Units of account, that is the number of it is also determined how, how many numbers of the item will be given to you. And store of value, it has a value that is being stored and also later on can be used in it. Okay. Let's look at the Sharia uh, analysis in light of Fatawa and scholars' opinion in general about what we are talking about cryptocurrency. In general, scholars and Sharia experts have two different opinions. The first group of scholars is of the view that the cryptocurrency is haram. So the first scholars do agree that the cryptocurrency is haram, meaning prohibited by Sharia. The other group of this view uh, they are in the view that cryptocurrency is the principal halal, meaning permissible. First view, let's look at it, uh, uh, is haram, the cryptocurrency is haram. Who are the people that are attributing such? Grand Mufti of Egypt, he is among those that do agree that the cryptocurrency is not allowed, cryptocurrency is haram due to some attribute, as he says. Here, he says Bitcoin is easy, easily, used for illegal activities. Therefore, people use Bitcoin largely for illegal and non-Sharia compliance or purpose to avoid and hide themselves from the government and relevant authority. So because why Shakwi Alams has declared that the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is not allowed, is not permissible, is haram because people are using it illegally and they can hide themselves to promote something that is illegally and avoidable in the society. So they avoid themselves or they prevent themselves to be availed by the government authority in order to take action on them. So because of that, he said it's not allowed. That is the uh, Grand Mufti of Egypt. Number two, his reason, he says, Bitcoin is intangible and can only be used through internet. So it's intangible. You can see the view of first Hadafi's view that says anything that is intangible is not allowed. So here he do buy the idea that the Bitcoin is intangible, can only use in the in internet is not physically. That's why that is not allowed. Number three, Bitcoin allows for money laundering and fraud. You can see the money laundering and fraud can be easily used in terms of uh, making this thing to Bitcoin. Bitcoin has no central authority that monitor its system, but rather it destroys the control of central banks and government to monitor and control monetary system. So because of that, government has no over has no uh, uh, room to control the money, has no room to even look into the regulation and also uh, bank, uh, this, uh, 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 that is, uh, is, 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 is reducing the capacity and capability of the central bank and also government uh, system of monetary control. That's why they even says, they says, he says that also is not allowed. This is the Mufti, Grand Mufti in Egypt. So let's see the central Fatawa center of uh, Palestine. What are they saying about it? They said the Fatawa sentence Palestine also issued a Fatawa with regards to Bitcoin currency, uh, cryptocurrency. The Fatawa claims that Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is haram prohibited based on the following reason. Number one, they said the issue of Bitcoin is unknown and neither a government nor a central authority behind it. 
So the government and central authority, central authority is central bank, um, and they are not on the picture. So Bitcoin becomes into existence with the objective of no central authority and monitoring system. And therefore it is untrustworthy and unreliable. So because of this, they classify it not allowed. That is, it's untrustworthy and unreliable. Like we have seen what Bitcoin is doing previously. Bitcoin is a type of gambling because people invest a lot of money to create Bitcoin without a guarantee as to whether they will be success or not. So because of uncertainty and guarantee in that particular system of Bitcoin, they consider it, people are investing more money in it, they consider it as a gambling. Bitcoin miners try to solve mathematical try to solve mathematical, uh, uh, mathematical uh, puzzles. And if they succeed, they get money, but if they lose, they get nothing. So miners also, they are having issues here. They are not having much things. If they succeeded, they get reward. If they do not, they also get lost. They have nothing to benefit. Bitcoin is a subject to higher speculation because there is no base for, there is no base for speculation control in the Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency. So you can see how that is being uh, very uh, distinct for Palestine uh, uh, Fatawas. The Fatawas is strong, definitely. Uh, Sheikh Haitam from the UK, he also based on scholars, Sheikh Haitam authored a paper in Arabic in which he declared the Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are prohibited and not compatible with the Sharia amongst the key reason he claims he said, number one, cryptocurrency is backed by anything. It's not backed by anything, but rather it is created out of nothing. So no one, if for instance, you lose your money, can retrieve back your money like central bank. If you are having some issue, you can even report a financial institution too. They have not that control. And also, but rather it is created out of nothing. So it's created out of nothing. Secondly, cryptocurrency is not a legal tender. It is neither under the supervision of any government nor any central monetary control system, as we said previously. And number three, cryptocurrency can be easily used for money laundering and illegal purposes. We have discussed also this one too. So these are the false view of the scholars, which they have a strong and also sound view. Let's see the second view, cryptocurrency is permissible in principle. They say it's permissible. That is the second view. There is a formal, uh, famous legal maxim explained by the jurist. This is al aslu fil muamalat al ibah. That is the actual, the, the initiality of any kind of muamalat that is a business or contract is what is permissible, except there is something that shows it's impermissible. So they mean that original rule is permissible in financial business and transaction. In order, what everything is permissible unless we found it clearly contradictory to Sharia principles. So what they have said previously, it means it's not contradicted to Sharia principles. Let's see. We can also discuss that in our future discussion. According to the principles, uh, principles cryptocurrency is permissible princip uh, uh, principally like anything can be considered as money if it has this attribute. So these are the attributes they said once the cryptocurrency has made, it means the cryptocurrency has become useful. Treat it as a valued thing among the people. You have to treat it as a valued thing among you. So accept it as a medium of exchange by all and all substance, uh, substantial group of people. It has to be accepted as a medium of exchange and substance group of uh, people. Uh, it is measurable of value. So it has to be measured by value. And also, and it serves as a unit of account, as we already discussed those things. Therefore, any cryptocurrency which fulfills the conditions such as Bitcoin is acceptable as a money. So in this, these are what they say it's acceptable if it has met these four criteria, as we mentioned. The Fatawa Center of South Africa, Islamic Seminary, Darul Olu, Zakaria has taken the position that the Bitcoin fulfilled the condition of mal and therefore it's permissible for a trade. However, they not uh, they not uh, they not that to be qualified as a currency. It should be approved by the relevant government authority. So these are their claims and their attributes and also their discussions on the Bitcoin. This is the views of scholars. Now we discuss and what we are what is being needed to be considered as a mal 
But in our next class, which is the last session of our Bitcoin before the end of the session entirely, we are going to what lead to Bitcoin invention. This is the big question that we need to look at the paper that Satoshi Nakamoto write and also some useful information that are attributes to such kind of um, uh, Bitcoin, uh, to such kind of uh, cryptocurrency. And also we have to discuss the technical area of Bitcoin. I do hope that we have understand the fundamental of Bitcoin and what scholars has been says or discuss on it. And uh, for the future instances, definitely uh, our last session on Bitcoin, which is next class, we will be looking into what leads to Bitcoin invention. I hope you find this useful. Thank you for listening to me. And uh, Prof, over to you. <laughs> I think this time around, we have to go for a break and come back like as, uh, my destiny is showing, definitely. But Prof, it's over to you now. Thank you. Let me stop sharing. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Jan. Thank you very much for the for the presentation. So, uh, are you recommending for the break? Yes, actually, we want Dr. to go for a break for a five to ten minutes, uh, five to six or seven minutes. Okay, okay. So we are it's coming fine, back. Fine. Yes. Okay. So we are coming back for the question and answer okay, session okay. and also. Uh, Quiz, thank you so much. Please, you remain Please, on. Absolutely. Yes, and let's see by then. Thank you. And let's yeah, see. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes. Alaikum. Welcome back after the journey. So, no, right? Okay, thank, thank you no. so much, bro. Thank you. We are now going to have the question answer session and the quiz also send the quiz to the participants so that they okay. attempt it. So the mic is your participants. Yeah. Meanwhile, they can ask the question if they have any during this time. Hello, I mean, unmute your mic, please. Assalamu alaikum. Wa 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 alaikum. Yes, you can hear you. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Tijani. Good morning, Prof. Um, how, how was the um, Eid celebration? Of yeah, it, was had it, it was great. It was great. Yes. Okay, so my shot. Yeah, um, so yes. um, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Tijani, um, my question is, uh, according to the Hanafi scholar view, um, yes. they said Bitcoin cannot be mal because it is intangible bank. So um, yes, what if it became tangible in some other states um, while still remain intangible in other states? Would it be required? Would, would that be be a requirement, or would, would it be regarded as mal? The reason that I'm asking this question is that um, there was a time, few few I think few months ago, when I saw it on social media. I don't know how true it is that um, there are states that have established Bitcoin notes that uh, they even went further to um, establish uh, a Bitcoin at a ATM outlet that can dispose uh, Bitcoin cash. I don't know how true it is, but if so, if maybe there, there, there is uh, a generality of, um, of, that, of that incidence, will, would that be regarded as mal or not? Okay, initially, uh, is a part of the requirement where they are asking uh, the system to be that it has to be uh, tangible. That's what they are referring to. I it has to be tangible. But okay. in a scenario whereby it's tangible in other states and in uh, another is not tangible, that does not uh, regard as not tangible because when you haven't, you you don't have it in your state, but other states are having it. I think that does not mean that it's not tangible, but actually what Bitcoin is being designed for uh, is to be a digital currency, cryptocurrency, digital currency. So digital currency, I do not believe that, maybe some people can do that, you know, we are in the age of technology nowadays. Some yes. people can design that and post it on social media. But actually when we say that, digital currency, we are not referring to a tangible thing, something that is tangible. 
we are referring to something that is digital managed. So that's why they use the cryptography in order to secure the system. Mm -hmm. So go back to the question by saying that Hanafi is only one of the condition, but they have some issues like of the uh, scholars, uh, you can see that some of the scholars do categorically stated that mm -hmm. uh, if the cryptocurrency did not uh, meet such requirements, it's not required, it's not considered as a currency. So one of the, what they refers to is to be tangible. But you can see Taki Usmani is from Hanafis, but he refutes the term saying that it has to be tangible. Even something that is not tangible can be considered. Even within the Hanafis uh, jurisdictions, there are some who are not in line or who are not supporting the issue of the, uh, this in the mal or the currency or any useful thing has to be tangible. Uh, I hope you get the question right. You get the answer right. Yes. Yeah. So being a tangible or not tangible definitely is one of their requirements. But even between them, there are some uh, uh, misunderstanding that some are in the view that yes, it has to be tangible. Some are saying no, even tangible or not tangible, once it has those category, uh, like store of value, uh, units of accounts, and what? Medium of exchange, that attributes, that is the attributes of mal. So it has to be considered as a mal. Yes. I hope I answered your question. Yes. Please. Yeah, you have answered the question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank, you. thank you so much. So any question? But you know, yes. at times the beautiful Q&A session is maybe you have not covered something from your discussion. Yeah, so exactly. when somebody asks, it will draw your attention back yeah. to that area yes. so that you can have a say on it. So that's a beautiful of uh, question. So please, you are free to ask questions if you want. Even when you are doing your exercise, that is a quiz, you have a distance to ask. You can ask questions if there are something that is not clearly uh, understood. I have to Abdullah, she's just joining and she said that she also watch the video on YouTube, the yeah, lecture on YouTube. We are glad to hear that. And we want also people, those that are not opportune to be part of the program should also listen to uh, the YouTube. I can see Alamin is also yeah, uh, so, um, rising, huh? Uh, yes. um, I, I've not seen the password. Is this still remainder one, two, three, four, or? Yes, password, I password. No, I just posted now. Uh, it is not so, much uh, today. Dr. Bilani, I think we have the one or two sessions left for this training. Is it? Uh, yes, one for the training and one for closing, which is yeah. uh, for closing. Uh, before we close, we have another free session, open session. Open yeah, session, open that is whatever they have as a question they can ask as we traditionally uh, yes. do previously. So if you have a question, you have anything related to what we have discussed that is not clear to you, or even outside the discussion. Yeah, uh, the, I think that thing, is, uh, that thing is also required for us as a feedback so that when we design our next training, we will be getting the benefit okay. from, this feedback, from this feedback by the participants. Okay. Another thing yes. is that uh, this topic is not that simple as we are considering generally like Islamic economics. And when I talk to the people, they say, yeah, we know. I talk to a number of the people again. So even our students, they have these uh, basic knowledge in their, in their courses about the Islamic economics and banking. But I think this is not that simple because there are many uh, school of thoughts which are involved in it. So this is also evolving. This uh, this uh, this thing is also evolving. So we need to have the like in the previous training we had the I myself have learned a lot. But in this training, uh, my knowledge previous knowledge is further advanced. So this is what I think is the importance of this training that we have to continually participate in this training so that we can yes you know we cannot continue to teach the basis at least if somebody want to key into something at least. Yeah, he, if you want the, the, the distance to continue, for instance, you need to be talking to the contemporary, you need to also discuss issues related to contemporary things, for instance. Contemporary things like this Bitcoin, at least in our last session, in our session that will be coming, we are going to, I would 
clearly our position in this uh, issue of Bitcoin. And this Bitcoin, if you look at it, for instance, in Nigeria here where I uh, live, I think uh, we have several platforms that are coming ab from abroad. Some are locally minted, but some are coming from abroad to have a second third of it. Without second third of it, people will, put, will be putting their money. Uh, we, uh, you know, those that are from Nigeria in this program, they may be a witness that a lot of uh, investment uh, program are coming. So if you do not uh, expose them to this basic understanding of what exactly is happening, that's the reason why we are even talking about something related to gambling interest rate, because for them to understand the basic. So when such issue, the contemporary issue that comes in, to this, like uh, Bitcoin now, at least I do agree that from the scratch, if somebody is following us from the scratch, from the uh, starting point of Bitcoin discussion up to today, he may learn a lot and he may even expose to something that is unknown to him previously. So if you have this kind of speculation, doubt, and also uncertain on something that you think that is an investment, is being attributed to investment, you have to have second third of it before you go into it. You cannot just tread deep into it without any uh, second thought, without any uh, consulting scholars, those that are very uh, uh, knowledgeable. And also we wanted to sanitize our system of finance, which people may even understand it more better way than to just think of how Islamic finance or Islamic economics and finance have been in theory aspect of it, not practical. So being theory will not help matters. If I read it, you read it, that guy read it, and all of us read it, but we are not implementing it. What's the essence of reading? There is no essence, because theory also need to be practically implemented. So with that, I think it will be so amazing to us to be discussing an issue related to contemporary things so that will enlighten us more. I can see Umar, uh, Mustafa, Mustafa Umar is raising yeah. his hand. Yeah, please, can you unmute yourself, Umar? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, thank you Mustafa for joining us. At least mine is not actually a question, but an issue, sir. I yes. lose two to three lectures. So, yes. The YouTube session is not certain, like the timing. So normally I used to watch it later. So the comment session I do not, and I have never participated in the comment session so, because I used to stream it later. So I don't know if now. But no problem. I think that okay. we are giving that we are sending these session in the YouTube just for the, this reason that the participants who are not able to attend these session, I mean the Zoom session for some reasons. They may attend the after what the, uh, the YouTube session happens. So later you later later you have that uh, this in Mustafa, so you can see the previous sessions and also the YouTube channel will also be sent to you the link related to uh, 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 to the program would be sent to you so that you can go through it and also have the, uh, and listen to the previous classes. If somebody, for instance, contacted you and he wants to know more about what you have discussed, I think it will be so amazing. You can give more enlightenment on what you have uh, said, but by individual confirmation, I think it will be difficult, definitely. But what we are saying now, please, we should refer him to uh, our channel so that that is the uh, postcard, uh, Lana postcard channel, so that he can see the previous uh, classes and discussions took place in our previous sessions. Yeah, exactly. And one thing we are really, we are really in need of the suggestions from our participants that we really want to improve this session uh, with this training. We really want to improve our system. Um, so your suggestions are, will always be very useful. Okay, so Mustafa, I think you have had the discussion, right? Yes, sir, I have this, but the problem is that I use YouTube downloader. I used to download it offline to watch it later offline. So the comment session okay. is not available for, for people like me. 
Okay, okay, okay. So no problem. At times, at times he may even uh, you can make a comments when you start uh, watching. Uh, you know, uh, and if you want to put it on your this thing, that one is different. But when you are having this thing, when you make comments on what we have, uh, 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 what we have said previously, we are taking that as an attendance. Somebody has attended the course and also watched the program, so it will not affect you because you have watched the program and also comments on it. So yes, we are yes. taking it as you have understand and also you have watched the program. This is, a, this, is a, uh, this is a very good advice by Dr. Pajani that if you are not able to attend the, this, this session, uh, then attend, watch the video in the YouTube and, uh, and there is a discussion question with each video. You just answer that discussion question as a note that you have attended this. This is another option available to us. Plus also all the participants, I am repeating that uh, everyone should take participate, uh, should participate in the discussion of the video. I mean, in the discussion, description of the video, because in the future, when the coming session that people will watch, uh, watch these, uh, these videos, they will see that the, how the participants have participated in the discussion. This is important, both for this uh, training and also for the learning by the participant. So this is a very much professional yeah. attitude that is required by by our our our, our participants, they should uh, enthusiastically. Uh, I mean to say, with the full motivation, they should participate in the discussion and also float their questions if anything comes to their mind, and also they give us the suggestion through that. So this is a open for this mm -hmm. is a, I mean to say a very good thing that uh, uh, during the Corona we are able to maintain this relationship between the two countries and this is excellent. And my students on my end, they are also yesterday we had a very good session. With Dr. Dajani and most of uh, really, if you just go into that video, you will find that uh, our students are really appreciating Dr. Dajani and uh, the way he has given the answers and explained everything. So, this is how we are communicating, uh, connecting the two societies together with the time, inshallah. I think, I think that session is very large session. <laughs> it's very yeah, large. Yeah, yeah. I think it would touch almost a touch six students or something like that. So it's yeah. a very large uh, distance and also gathering. So actually, we can also uh, our, see there are some actually, uh, participants. Actually, our session mm. is basically yes. ending. The semester is ending in Pakistan. Tomorrow, uh, there is going to be their final exam. So uh, that is one of the reasons that. But in the next semester, uh, we will be having the more seminars in Shadra together. And I would invite some more teachers, some more scholars from the Nigeria to give the seminars to our students. So this is a very good thing. I mean, a very good platform for us. That's very good. Okay, Dr. Thank you Jani. so much. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Jani. Thank you very much for giving the presentation. So participants, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir.